Hello, and welcome to our Elecom Capstone Fall Symposium 2022 virtual presentation. We are Team Aeroscionics, and this is our project, the SAINT Dashboard Security Articles of Interest for Awareness, Outreach, and Actionable Intelligence. Let's meet our technical directors for this project. We have Daniel DeMays. He is the president and CEO of Aeroscionics. He is also a URI graduate, class of 1989. Next is Bron Pav. He is a chief engineer at Aerocyonics. Both of our directors have showed us a lot of support and guidance through this project, and we have appreciated the opportunity of working with them both. Let's meet the team. We are a team of two. I am Bella Johnson, computer engineering, and we also have James McDermott, also computer engineering. Let's get an overview about Aerocyonics. They are headquartered in East Greenwich, Rhode Island, and they aim to provide expertise in technology sectors such as cyber physical system security, hardware and software assurance, counterfeit avoidance and detection, and advancement of talent in topic areas. To understand the motivation of this project, we first have to understand what is cybersecurity. Now, according to the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, Cybersecurity is the art of protecting networks, devices, and data from unauthorized access or criminal use, and also the practice of ensuring confidentiality, integrity, and availability of information. So why is cybersecurity important? Well, we live in a digital world, and with that comes risks. Cybersecurity is an issue that affects every industry, organization, business, and user who is online. In recent years, especially post-pandemic, there has been a growing volume and sophistication of cyber attackers and attack techniques. Cybersecurity has never been a more massive issue and we all need to be educated about the risks that come with being online. That brings us to the Weekly Security Articles of Interest, a current service provided by Aerocyonics. The Articles of Interest is a document that is sent out to their subscribers filled with links to current security articles, documents, advisories, reports, events, videos, podcasts, and patches. Every week, the, the articles of interest is roughly 150 pages, completely filled with the most current cybersecurity news. The aim of Aerocyonix creating this service is to increase the awareness and engagement of their users about the security risks and cyber attack events that occur. Hello, my name is James McDermott, and the software tool that we are developing for Aerocyonics will provide actionable intelligence to industries on threats that are time sensitive. So Aerocyonics reaches, releases something called the Articles of Interest. They have more than 100 threats on them, and they come out weekly. So we will take in those threats. We're going to classify them so they are searchable by the user and we will also provide solutions for these threats. We're going to utilize deep neural networks and natural language processing as along with machine learning to achieve this. It is important that we have cost scalability with this tool, so there will be a free option as well as a subscription option. The software itself will also be scalable, so that way we can add more categories into our taxonomy and help expand it for new threats that come into the space. Bella and I have attended multiple meetings uh, to present a quad chart and Gantt chart to the executives of the company. We have talked about ways to divide tasks so we can work in parallel. We've also talked about taking bigger challenges and breaking them up into smaller ones. And we've also talked about software modularity. This is the flow chart for our current development that we've done. You can see it goes all the way from file reader to either the content manager. We've also exported it to Excel, which is the path that I will go over. So we'll start from the file reader right now and work our way to the frequency analysis of keywords and phrases, part of our language processing. So for language processing, what we are focused on is first getting the website text. 
how do we get that website text? Well, well first we're going to need a URL. And where are the URLs? They are on the weekly security items. So the first task that I needed to do was I had to pull in the PDF into our program and scrape all of its text. From there, we had to do some text sanitization. And the way we did that was basically I stripped all the text besides the URLs. And the way we did that is by looking for text patterns. For example, a URL starts with HTTP. There is more to that because how do you know when the URL ends, for an example? My script is there on the right. But what that script does is it exports all the URLs from the articles, but only the URLs. And I did this for software modularity purposes because it was going to be passed to Bella's program one URL at a time. And then her program will look up the URL and take the website text and bring that into our software. Once it was in our software, we did keyword and phrase analysis on it. Uh, you can see our categories at the bottom there, separated by a backslash T, that is a tab. Each one of those categories has its own phrases and keywords, which Bella will talk more about. But we basically just counted up the occurrences of these keywords and phrases and then created a correlation number for each category so we could later sort the article into our taxonomy. With this taxonomy small right now, it will be expanded upon. But the reason why we choose tab to separate it is because in Excel, when you press tab, it goes to a new column. And when you press enter, it goes to a new row. So you can create something called a tab separated value file. And that's what I decided to export in order to import it into Excel, just so we can have a visually appealing frequency matrix to look at. And this is that matrix. There is much more URLs than this, but we just included a small snapshot. There's also more categories, and those categories are going to greatly expand as we go forward. Uh, but as you can see, you can see the correlation numbers in there. You can see some higher ones. These articles will be placed into the categories based on the correlation numbers. In our future technical responsibilities is we'll be adding in cosine similarity because right now we only have the frequency analysis. The cosine similarity will help us do this even more precisely. We've got to train our model, our ML model, and our natural language processing model. We're going to greatly broaden our taxonomy as I've mentioned. Uh, and then we're also going to go try to find the solutions. And now uh, I'll be passing it back to Bella. I will now go over the programs of the block diagram that I created. So for the content manager, I first created find links to find the starting point of the articles of interest in the string given from file reader. Then I created link to text using the web scraping library beautiful soup to output a string of the content of a given URL. Finally, I created test GUI, which uses the Pi simple GUI library and beautiful soup library to create a GUI with multiple windows. The GUI was very simple, um, but we used it to understand the format we would want the future Saint dashboard to be in. To start the frequency analysis code, we first needed to decide what our starting taxonomy will be. We referenced the cyber physical system pinwheel multiple times throughout the project and used the 10 categories listed in the pinwheel for our starting taxonomy. Once we had our taxonomy, we decided to use keywords to scrape articles and categorize them. We worked with our technical directors to find keywords for every category that were broad enough that they encapsulated a category but specific enough that they differentiated from other categories. You can see that for one of the categories, information assurance and data security, we had the keywords cloud, email, telecommunication, IoT, Wi-Fi, and device-based communication. Once we started running tests, we quickly realized that email isn't a great keyword because it's too broad and can apply to many different categories. 
So once I had our list of keywords, I input those words into a two-dimensional list where each column is a category. I then scraped every article for each keyword and created a frequency matrix where the values are the number of occurrences of each keyword. From there, the code sums each column and classifies the article according to the greatest sum. You can see in this example, the largest sum was nine. So that article was classified into the corresponding category, which is category two. By doing this, we were able to get a starting sample for our machine learning model. For my future technical responsibilities, I first have to learn how to use Spacey library efficiently for NLP. Spacey is a natural language processing library that has functions like cosine similarity, which we'll need for our ML model. Then we need to import the sample created by the frequency analysis program to our machine learning model and use cosine similarity to get a correlation coefficient. Um, the correlation coefficient is the percent similarity of two articles. We will then train the machine learning model using the correlation coefficient and uh, then correct any misclassifications of articles. We eventually want to add subcategories and categories by industry to our taxonomy for a more precise search. Then I will create an online web tool for the same dashboard and add the completed taxonomy to our web tool. I will work to improve the GUI to be user-friendly and create search options for users. The last phase of the project will be using natural language processing to link actionable intelligence to each threat, which will provide the user with information on patches and other security measures so that they can take action promptly. Our team future technical accomplishments include creating a sample of data for machine learning, use SPACI to find the correlation coefficient and threshold value, and finally use natural language processing to find actionable mitigations to the user. So a risk that we have evaluated um, can occur is if we start with an inaccurate starting sample of data, then it will cause all future categorization from our by our machine learning model to be inaccurate. So this is a grade B risk and our mitigation strategy is to perfect the starting sample as much as we can with the help of the Aerosionics team. Another risk that comes up is if we have to use another library other than Spacey for natural language processing, then this will just delay the progress of the project um, because we will have to conduct more research into a different library. So this is a grade D risk um, and our mitigation strategy is to learn all things Spacey. Lastly, I want to thank all the people who made this project possible. Dr. Sunak, our capstone program director, Brendan and Jamie, our consulting technical directors, and Dan and Braun, our directors from Aerosionics. We appreciate the opportunity to work on this project, and we're excited to see what progress we make in the next few months. Thank you.